Hi, I'm Beth Bell. I'm a senior lecturer in psychology here at York St. John University and I'm going to be talking about my research today which is um, all about how digital technologies affect how we feel about our bodies, how we think about our bodies and how we treat our bodies. Diet and exercise technologies, so mobile phone apps or wearable technologies like the Fitbit, these are some recently emerging technologies that really do have potential to change the way we um, relate to our bodies and the relationship that we have with them. My recent paper, which was in collaboration with colleagues at um, University of Manchester and University of Lancaster, uh, this paper was uh, concerned with understanding how these technologies um, affect us, what potential harms they might cause. First, we conducted some exploratory research, so we conducted some workshops and some surveys with young people who um, had used these technologies to understand whether they had any negative experiences. And what we found was that 40% of young people reported some form of negative experience. Some described feeling um, obsessed with the app and this was particularly the case where the app involves some form of self-monitoring, so where you've got to actively uh, input your daily calorie intake, for example. Young people reported starting to feel obsessed with the calorie counting in the app young people reported that they felt that the technology set kind of unrealistic goals for them and these goals led them to feel um, anxiety or um, even to become kind of demoralised that they were unable to meet those goals. In the first phase of this research it really became apparent that there's some features in these apps that seem to be more problematic than other features, so in particular features related to self-monitoring, uh, calorie intake and um, unre unrealistic goal setting. So then what we decided to do is we decided to conduct a content analysis of the top 100 diet and exercise apps available in the Google Store to see what the prevalence of these features were. So in this analysis we found that about 20% of apps allowed users to set body weight goals for themselves that were dangerously underweight, so BMI is low as 13 in some situations. And of these apps, about half of them actually would then provide you with um, a daily calorie intake or a recommended um, dietary requirement to help you achieve that goal. So it was providing you with like a roadmap to really low body weight. We also found that about two thirds of the app were focusing on um, either weight loss goals or appearance goals. And the reason this is problematic is because there's a big body of psychological research which suggests that when you pursue exercise um, or diet for these reasons, for appearance related reasons, then you're unlikely to um, keep up with that health behaviour in the long term. So the findings from the study have been used to inform uh, National Institute of Clinical Excellence guidelines around the use of diet and exercise technologies. Um, we also feel like the findings really highlight the importance of responsible innovation uh, when creating diet and exercise technologies. So this is about making designers think about what the potential um, negative consequences of using these technologies are when they're creating them. And we also recommend that there should be some regulation in place. So for example, a really simple regulation would be to stop um, apps on the open market that allow the setting of these underweight goals. Experiences of using these apps are not all negative. There are some positives and there are some negatives. And I know that many people watching this might be thinking about using uh, diet and exercise technologies themselves to maybe start a healthier lifestyle. And what I would say to those of you thinking about using them is to first of all make sure you use an app that's been created by a reputable source. So for example, the NHS have created a Couch to 5K app, which I would recommend using. Uh, second, um, I would recommend regularly checking in on yourself when you're using the app. And if it's starting to make you feel uncomfortable, it's really important that you then take a break. And lastly, I would just recommend anyone with a history of eating disorders just to be particularly careful um, if they're considering using these apps. If you'd like to hear more about my research, just click on the links below.